say um, we can challenge the idea and concept. However, um, not discouraging. I'm, I, I understand what that means as far as not discouraging, but maybe because I don't feel I do it, I can't get an understanding of what that would look like, if that makes sense. An understanding of what, what would look like. So where it says for guide not, guideline number three, we can challenge the idea, concept, or philosophy with questions and thoughts. However, we never engage in intentionally discouraging the remarks remarks or personal attacks. Okay, I'll, I'll make it real simple for you. And we do it all the time, just a lot of different ways. But the most elementary way that we do it, for instance, you saying something and I might have a problem with it, but I might not be able to articulate the problem I have with it. So what I'll do is I'll deflect. And deflection can be something as basic as, well, that's why you got on the funny looking shoes. And it don't even match your outfit anyway. You know, I'm, I'm just saying, and, and then so what happens is because we can't handle the, the conversation verbally, we say intentionally discouraging things to deflect and take the conversation in other directions. That makes sense? Yes, thank you. I was going to say another perfect example of that is, you know what? What you're saying just makes no sense to me. Like, you're crazy. I can't mm. believe you said that. Those are insulting. Those are discouraging. Those mm. are like, what? Even that. Mm. Please. Hmm. Yeah. Right. Because I've done that. Yes. So I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not proud, but I have. And, and that's why I say, microphone. That's why I say intentionally discouraging because you can't help it if you're sharing your thoughts to the best of your ability and somebody decides to be discouraged. That's another thing. But if you're saying stuff with the intent to discourage, we know when we're doing that. And that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm not 100% clear of everything at this point. Moment. Yes, sir. I'll chime in as I come along, but it felt like you're almost indicating that I'm not supposed to agree to disagree. I'm supposed to just flow with the flow because it's being delivered to me by that individual, and and I'm just supposed to jump on board because that individual has has that thought, and I I can't agree to agree with that. Right, <laughs> and, and see, this is the this is the cool thing. What we have to keep in mind is if we have a desire to have what I have defined as a conscious conversation, because we, we, we don't have to participate in a conscious conversation, but when it's a conscious conversation, it's not a matter of agreeing or disagreeing. It's a matter of understanding or not being able to understand. And so, so if if, uh, if you say, well, we, we just have to agree to disagree. In a conscious conversation, we don't have to do that because I know that's the traditional approach, the thought process of agreeing and disagreeing. And what I'm trying to do in a conscious conversation is totally eliminate that whole agreement, disagreement thing because that's where the whole conflict thing traditionally operates. That's the realm it operates in. So when I'm specifically trying to outline what I call a conscious conversation, I'm saying it's not necessary to agree, it's not necessarily to, to disagree, and it's not necessary to agree to disagree. It's like have, for lack of a better way to describe it, have the courage to say, well, I don't, I don't really understand, I, I just don't get it, and that's okay. Or I do, okay, I understand and leave it. See, we can't leave it. We, 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 we can understand what somebody is saying, even if it's not something that flows in our direction, and we can leave it. What I'm, time. hold it, hold it, wait, wait. I'm sorry. We about to be in a fight. <laughs> we about to violate. <laughs> so, <laughs> violate number four, guideline number four. So, 
So, so what I'm trying to do is establish what is called a conscious conversation, and, and that's not needed in a conscious conversation. However, in the regular conversation, the traditional ones that we're watching every day and that's going on, and that's not working very well when we get in a group discussion, uh, we can do that all the time. Yes, sir. I'm still slightly lost because the, the, the term conscious conversation doesn't give me a picture of a subject matter that we would be discussing in a conscious conversation. So if we were picking a subject matter, this empty glass, and we're all speaking, someone comes to the table maybe with 95% fact of how this glass has become mm -hmm. what we're looking at. In a conscious conversation, from what I'm understanding, you say, I'm just supposed to sit back and accept everyone's vision and opinion of this conscious vision that they see, whether, whether they're right or wrong. Don't question it, don't challenge it, just No, I didn't say don't. Understanding. No. I didn't say don't question a challenge. You can question and challenge. Oh, I'm sorry, I just, just Go ahead. I'm gonna give it right back, but you kind of like answered his question. He didn't say you can't. It says right here. We, we can challenge the idea, concept, or the philosophy with questions and thoughts. It, it's not like you don't have to ask questions again about what somebody thinking. Challenge them with some questions and thoughts. Just don't say, okay, whatever. Like you said, don't be discriminating. You crazy. Don't challenge them. If, if you if you think if someone say here and says that glass is full, if we're having a conscious conversation, from my understanding, I'm late. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, explain to me why you think that glass is full. That's what I want. I want to know. I'm not gonna sit out here and say, "Oh man, you crazy." And, you know, everybody think you're. No, if you think that glass is 95 percent full, tell me how you got there. And I think that's what you got. Is that that's, that's what an idea that's what the conscious conversation right, is and about. If you, and if you can convince me, then I'm with you. Not not only that, but even if it's not about convincing. It's about me saying, this is why I think that glass is 95% full. And then somebody else can say, I think it's 95% empty. And the, the challenge in a conscious conversation is for us to be able to leave it right there. Because have faith in knowing everybody that's looking at this glass, they're going to be some that see it as 95% empty, and we don't need a hero to speak for all of us. Let the man describe why he think it's 95% full or woman, and somebody describe why they think it's 95% uh, whatever, and then be, have the ability, the discipline to leave it, and know that everybody else around listening is Operating from their perspective, their understanding. I'm not gonna hog this conversation. No, go ahead. Give him the mic. Give him the mic. But it's almost like a contradiction. I'm sorry. You can interview me. No, you can see. It's almost like an, a contradiction of the the anger that you spoke of having to get over because you had your conscious thought, and maybe the rest of the room wasn't on board with your conscious thought, and you were upset with the fact that your thought was right for you and you thought it was right for everybody. That was 20 years ago. Okay, okay, okay. It's 20 years ago. Okay. Yes. Um, so I just wanted to say, uh, given, I mean, I have like a little bit more clarification based off of some of the conversation that took place. Mm. But, um, you know, when you said, like giving your example about two plus two mm. equaling four, but someone else says that it equals five, um, I think that some things are absolute. It's not a matter of opinion mm. um, or perspective, um, uh, whatever it may be. And so to me, I feel like this could be a teaching moment. And, you know, even if that person still does not take away from the conversation what, you know, might be the absolute, mm. um, at the same time, I think we have an obligation to say what actually is um so that you know i feel like i would not i would be doing everyone a, dis a disservice if i just did not speak on uh 
certain things that aren't actually absolutes. And then they're walking around talking to the next person saying the same thing and maybe that conversation may not.